Welcome to the Boxing Gossip Channel. Quick video on two of the undercard fights for Saturday night's card featuring David Hay and Tony Bellew. I'm really, really looking forward to these two fights. Look, I know it's very fashionable to hate on the main event, to hate on Eddie Hearn, to hate on Matchroom, uh, to hate on the pay-per-view. And maybe there's good reason to hate on all those things. Um, but there's two really, really intriguing fights on the undercard. Um, and I'm going to talk about them in this video. If you are interested in the main event, prediction for that has already gone up on the channel uh, and was up a few days ago, so please do check it out. Um, but the two fights I'm referring to are Joe Joyce versus Leonard Thomas, uh, which I see as a good fight, not necessarily a competitive fight, and John Ryder versus Jamie Cox, um, which I see as a good fight and which I see as a very, very competitive fight. Um, Strong cases to be made for both men. John Ryder is a kind of boxer who is well known in the trade. Um, Ryder's had certain setbacks in his career. He's had defeats. Um, but he probably is coming into his prime. And he's had some very, very good fights uh, in recent years. And some performances um, that suggest he really is still a threat. He's only 29 years old. So even though it feels like he's been on the scene for, for quite some time. Uh, you know, he's a guy who potentially has some miles left on the clock and he's actually improved with the step up to super middleweight, which I for one was sceptical about because, you know, I just didn't think he had the size to really compete in the 168 pound division. Um, Jamie Cox is, is kind of opposite to John Ryder. You know, John Ryder's kind of been involved in gritty 50-50 trade fights for the last four or five years. Uh, Jamie Cox is a guy who was very well known. He's a guy who was quite hyped, um, but didn't really have too many major tests in his career, too many 50-50 fights, till he stepped up and faced George Groves. Um, you know, and obviously that fight ended with a devastating knockout loss for Jamie Cox, and he's on the comeback trail now. So it's kind of an interesting clash. Two guys at super middleweight, um, neither of them are the biggest punchers in the world. They're both quite tough guys. They're both quite small for super middleweight and you've got a guy who like public perception of John Ryder is like on a gradual incline um, but you know at a sort of medium level whereas Jamie Cox the hype has kind of been up here and then it's kind of hit a nosedive after that George Groves defeat so they're kind of meeting at a very very interesting stage in their career the winner of this fight certainly has the potential to go on to bigger and better things and stylistically it could be a really good class as well uh, Ryder uh, he's actually rated as the 22nd best super middleweight in the world by BoxRec. And that kind of sums up what I'm talking about, about you know the fact that I view him as a sort of fringe level contender. Let's not forget that back in 2013, um, he took multiple rounds off Billy Joe Saunders. And often Billy Joe Saunders will refer to that as a very, very tough night. You know, Billy Joe Saunders obviously now got on to be considered one of Britain's top pound for pound fighters and obviously a world champion. And John Ryder... Um, gave him a lot of troubles back in 2013. He then took a loss in 2015 um, to Nick Blackwell. It was a KO loss. Um, took a quite a controversial points loss to Jack Armfield in 2016. And at around that time, you know, a lot of people were kind of of the mind to start writing John Ryder off. I was actually at his comeback fight after the Jack Armfield loss where he took on Adam Etches at the Olympia. And he won that one in UD, by UD, he won that one nicely, quite clearly. Uh, another very controversial split decision loss to Rocky Fielding in Liverpool, followed by maybe a career peak performance, knocking out highly rated Patrick Nielsen on the undercard of a World Boxing Super Series event. So he's going into this, in many ways, riding the quest of a, a wave, having stopped Patrick Nielsen. And as I say, taking a guy on like Jamie Cox, you know, Jamie Cox probably best known for sparring stories and stories of his activities outside of the ring. Uh, took that stoppage loss that I've already referred to to Groves in 2017. Subsequent to that, he stopped an opponent with a losing record. If you look down Jamie Cox's resume, though, and I said, who is the best person Jamie Cox has ever beaten? You know, it, that is a, a tough question to answer. You know, is it Lewis Taylor? Um, you know, Jamie Cox really hasn't got a history of beating good names. Um, you know, the, the names he's beaten are very debatable. And the guys that Ryder's been in with and the guys Ryder's beaten are, you know, are a much higher level. So, you know, Jamie Cox has never beaten an Adam Etches. He's never beaten a Patrick Nelson. Um, you know, he, he, he's been in with George Groves. 
But we're talking about a guy in John Ryder who's mixed it at that sort of British Commonwealth Euro level for quite a number of years now. Um, so it's an interesting one. Um, it really is an interesting one. And I guess the question is, will that experience that John Ryder's um, accumulated, will that stand him in good stead? Or will a guy like Jamie Cox, who has that big hype behind him, will he be able to deliver on the promise? I think Cox, I think they're both very tough men. I think they're both durable on the whole. Um, I think Cox possibly has the more power, although I do think Cox's power has been overrated historically. I don't think either of them have have immense power. Um, I think Ryder, I'd probably give a slight edge to in terms of technique, in terms of boxing fundamentals. If I'm not mistaken, two southpaws here. And, you know, two short southpaws, um, two guys who like to fight on the inside, two guys who aren't afraid of a bit of a scrap. I think it could be messy. And when the fight gets messy, I think Jamie Cox could be swinging and missing like a fast bowler. Um, and I think, you know, John Ryder's more refined technicals, you know, the fact that he's got better fundamentals, um, the fact that he's been in these gritty fights before, I think it may stand John Ryder in good stead, actually. Uh, I expect a, a competitive fight, a close fight. It could be a bit of a war. You know, these are two guys who do both come to fight. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if it ends up being a fight of the night contender. Alternatively, two southpaws, the styles couldn't could gel. You know, it could be a complete mess. But yeah, you know, I think this is close. I think this is competitive, and I'm going to edge to John Ryder based on those techniques. I always think Jamie Cox is a guy who's been overrated because of the stories about him, because of the reputation and kind of aura he's built around himself. Um, you know, but I just think there's slightly too much lacking in his game defensively and slightly too much lacking in his game in terms of accuracy and ABC boxing. And I think in a, in a very close fight, I, I'm going to side ever so slightly with, with John Ryder. Um, yeah, Joyce Lenroy Thomas. I did a video on this one when it's announced. I think it's a very interesting fight. I, I'm quite high on the Joe Joyce hype train. You know, there's a lot of prospects in the UK scene at present. You know, long-term viewers will know I'm extremely hot on Huey Fury. Long-term viewers will know I'm extremely hot on Nathan Gorman. Less so hot on Nathan Gorman than I was a year or two, but nevertheless still very interested. Daniel Dubois is someone I'm sceptical of at this point, but you know, clearly the guy's got a lot of attributes. Clearly the guy's been very impressive in certain performances, and he's someone I'm not ruling out by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I think Joe Joyce is is right up there with the pick of the bunch. Um, he is slow. He is not instantly athletic and explosive like an Anthony Joshua or like a Pete David Hay. Um, but he's got good fundamentals and he's an imposing guy who's heavy handed and, um, you know, brings a high work rate and high pressure. I kind of think he will have some of the success of a Jarrell Miller in terms of imposing himself, bringing pressure, bringing output, bringing work rate. But I also think he should have some more long-range success than a Jarrell Miller. I'm saying he's 50% Jarrell Miller, 50% more of a classic long-range boxer. It's too early to tell how good he is. He hasn't fought the level of opposition just yet. But but I was very impressed by Joyce's debut against Ian Lewison. Uh, and I'm interested to see this fight against Lenroy Thomas. Lenroy Thomas, by the way, is someone I find very interesting as a boxer as well. In terms of core boxing skill, Lenroy Thomas is probably, you know, in terms of fundamentals and technique and boxing ability, you could make a case that Lenroy Thomas is one of the top 10 heavyweights in the world. Um what he lacks are some of the other attributes you need to be a world-class heavyweight, which means he's some way adrift of being a top 10 heavyweight in the world. Maybe not even adrift of being a top 30 heavyweight in the world. He probably doesn't have the power. He probably doesn't have the punch output. He probably doesn't have the size. And whenever I watch old Lenro Thomas fights, I still question his desire and his will to win. And I suspect he's the kind of opponent who can be pressured out of a fight and the kind of opponent whose will can be broken. Now, Lenroy was in excellent shape for the Dave Allen rematch, the kind of rematch that never was due to their cluster heads in the first round. 
Um, he was in excellent condition for that, and he has been partnering closely with Kenny Porter for the fight. Hopefully, he stayed in good shape following on from that Dave Allen 2 disappointment, and hopefully we see Leonard Thomas in as good a nick who's trained just as hard for this fight. It would be disappointing if he turned up having blown up after the Lenroy, after the David Allen fight. If Lenroy Thomas is at his best, he probably does have faster hand speed than Joe Joyce, and he probably is the kind of guy who could make Joe Joyce look bad for a round or two. If you think about Johan Duopar against Jarrell Miller, you know, Duopar lost that fight conclusively, but there were one or two things Duopar did that exposed frailty in Jarrell Miller's completeness. And I suspect Lenroy Thomas has the same potential in this fight. I don't think he can beat Joe Joyce. Um, and But I do think he's got enough attributes and enough skills to make Joe Joyce look a little bit sloppy for one or two occasions. If I'm honest, though, I actually picked Joe Joyce to win the fight by knockout. And I picked Joe Joyce to win the fight by knockout relatively early. Um, probably in the first six rounds of the fight, actually. I do believe Joyce is... Well, I know he's. Well, I think he's more heavy-handed than Allen, David Allen. I know he's a bigger guy than David Allen, and I also think he builds pressure a lot better than David Allen. Yeah, when you look back at that David Allen versus Lenroy Thomas one fight, I thought there were several occasions in that fight where Lenroy Thomas was about to go, but Kenny Porter dragged him through. Uh, you know, almost kicking and screaming, if you like. And if I look at Dave Allen's performance in that fight, he put a huge amount of pressure and came forward a lot. But what he kind of didn't do is fight behind a jab. He didn't judge his distance very well. And it kind of meant that he had nothing from the outside. And it kind of meant that when he was on the inside, his work was smothered and he couldn't land cleanly. I believe Joe Joyce will build the same press that Dave Allen built it. But I believe he'll do it with greater size, a greater jab, greater control of distance. And I believe when he starts to build that press, so we'll see more clinical construction of punches from Joyce on the inside. And probably landing a hell of a lot harder than David Allen was able to land. I suspect Joyce will get Lenroy out of there, um, you know, in in quicker order than people suspect. Um, and I just believe that for a guy like Lenroy Thomas, who's undoubtedly a talented boxer with certain attributes, a guy like Joe Joyce is almost going to be his kryptonite. You know, I just think that that pressure style is going to have him in a world of trouble. And you know, someone like a Joe Joyce could really be the guy to expose that flaw. You know, if Lenroy comes in super light, if he can move for a round, jab for a round, um, yeah, maybe he'll look good in spells, but I think it will be only a matter of time before we see him up against the ropes. And, you know, I think Joe Joyce will break Lenroy Thomas's will. Um, it's not bad Matt's making at all for the fourth fight of his professional career, you know, Leonardo Thomas is arguably a tougher opponent than David Hay himself for on his, uh, uh, you know, two return fights. You know, I, I picked Leonardo Thomas over Mark Lemory or Leonardo Thomas over Arnold Jurgi any day of the week. Let's put it that way. Um, it's ambitious matchmaking. They're not messing around with Joe Joyce. And I expect him to confirm the promise that they believe he has uh, by handling Leonardo Thomas and beating him by stoppage. Um, that's my take. Let me know your thoughts. I'm looking forward to these two fights. I think they're both very interesting. And I think they're both, um, you know, fights we're going to learn something from. Leave your comments in the section below. Let me know your take. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up. As always, thanks for tuning in.